Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome everyone to our online NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Guel and myself Professor Anjali Pal. We are both from the Civil Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part Environmental Chemistry will be covered by me. And the second part environmental microbiology will be taught by Professor Shudha Well. Now this is my third module and I have already covered acid, bases and salts in my module 1 and chemical equilibrium in module 2. Now in module 3 I will discuss about chemical kinetics this is my 11th lecture. In this lecture I will cover the following topics concept on rate of a reaction, measuring rate of a reaction, average rate and instantaneous rate. Now, what is a reaction? Chemical reaction we all know say for example, A and B react to give C and D. Then A and B will call the reactant and C and D will call the products. Now, here you can see some reaction is going on. There are two vessels. In both the vessels you see the zinc granules are there. And then in the first vessel dilute sulfuric acid is added and in the second vessel concentrated sulfuric acid is added. This is dilute and this is much more concentrated sulfuric acid. Now what you will see? You will see that in the first vessel where you have added dilute sulfuric acid the reaction is nothing but the evolution of hydrogen gas and it will form the bubbles. Here you can see that the bubbles are coming out in a very slow process, but here it is coming very vigorously. That means reaction is going on here slowly and here it is vigorously. So, this is the topic chemical kinetics which under which it will come why some reaction is slow and why some reaction is fast. Why do some reactions occur at a high speed? Maybe in a fraction of a second there are some reactions which you cannot even monitor by using simple instruments. It is so quick, so fast and why some reaction take place at a very slow speed. Sometimes it can take days, it can take months and even it can take years. Say you have seen the radioactivity and you know some million years the half life of some radioactive elements are million even million years. So, they are very 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 slow process. Why do some small changes of temperature can have huge effect on the reaction rate and how does a catalyst increase the rate of a reaction say for example, hydrogen and oxygen if you mix them then they will produce water, but this is a spontaneous process, but it will not happen unless you put some spark or you can add some catalyst. So, catalyst is very important to make a reaction very fast. How does the study on the rate of a reaction 
give us the information about the mechanism of the reaction, all these questions are answered in chemical kinetics. So, these are the scopes of chemical kinetics. Two basic questions come to when we see a reaction, two basic questions come to our mind when that is first thing is that the position of the equilibrium reacts position of the equilibrium of the reaction that means what how far the reaction will go this is already covered in the chemical equilibrium and the second question is the rate of the reaction when we talk about chemical equilibrium then we never tell about the about the speed of the reaction that means whether it will be fast or it will be slow and whether it will be fast or slow that will be handled in the chemical kinetics. To answer the first question chemical therm thermodynamics is important and to answer the second question chemical kinetics is the is important. Now, reaction rate the rate of a chemical change commonly described either in terms of the decrease of the concentration of the reactant. That means, when, when a reaction goes on the reactant concentration decreases and the product concentration increases. So, you can explain in both ways whether the, the reactant concentration is decreasing, how it is decreasing or how the product concentration is increasing both way we can we can show the kinetics. What is the chemical rate of the chemical change that does not apply to the entire chemical reaction. That means, if say for example, if I tell about this reaction, you see here NO2 is reacting with carbon monoxide, it is a gas phase reaction to produce nitric oxide and carbon dioxide. We can describe the rate in terms of either reactants may be either NO2 in terms of NO2 or in terms of CO or in terms of the products like either in terms of NO or CO2. But only thing we have to remember that if we express in terms of the reactants because the concentration is decreasing with time. So, negative sign should be there and in terms of the product if we, we if we describe then the it will not be negative sign but it will be positive sign, but both are ok. Now, if you see the, the curve you, you can easily understand that if we put concentration versus the time of reaction then, then if it is in terms of reactant we express then the curve will be like this because it is decreasing and in terms of product it will be increasing ok. So, the rate can be measured either in terms of the reactant or in terms of the product. Now, measuring the reaction rate, the very important thing is the reaction rate for a chemical reaction right. So, how to measure the chemical rate that is also very very important. Say for example, some reaction is going on at a particular time we want to know the concentration then what we should do because once the reaction starts it never stops it it goes on continuously. So, to see the concentration of the reactant or a product at a particular time then how we should measure it. Then there are several methods say for example, quenching method. The quenching method how it is say for ex example, you are you are um, monitoring a chemical reaction at a particular time you want to see the concentration of a either reactant or product then you can take some aliquot from the reactions reacting solution and then you can quench the reaction by putting it either in a, at a cold temperature or you can dilute it in enormous amount of solvent then what will happen then the rate of the reaction will slow down that then you can have little time to measure the concentration of the reactant or the product. And some instruments are there which can continuously monitor some properties of some substance either reactant or product. You can control it 
uh, control you can under control condition you can just you can uh, regulate the instrument and program the instrument to have the some properties say such as absorbance or fluorescence whatever a color. So, time to time it will by itself the instrument itself will measure the property and give you the, the um, rate equ equation or the curve. The other thing other properties you can measure there are there are many different ways you can measure the reaction means reaction rate like you can measure the BOD biochemical oxygen demand, you can measure COD chemical oxygen demand and other properties conductance whatever may be. So, that property should be there with either the pro product or the reactant then only you can you can measure them uh, according in, in at different times or time intervals. Now, what is the average rate of a reaction and instantaneous rate of a reaction? Say for example, I am traveling by a car, a vehicle. Okay, so if I start from Kharagpur and if I want to go to Kolkata, if I go to Kolkata, so my speed will not be constant, right? The speed of the car will not be constant, isn't it? So at different places, the the rate will, uh, the speed will vary. Then how we can determine? We can determine in terms of average speed. Say for example, first one hour from the initial time period the first one hour if I uh, see what distance I have covered and then what time I have taken to, to cover this distance then average, uh, average speed will be the distance travelled by the vehicle by the elapsed time. Okay. So, that is the average speed. So, this is for a vehicle, but uh, about the reaction how you can see the rate of a reaction here also average rate may come into picture, but say for example, you take two different times. So, you you determine the concentration at the initial time and then at the final time, then what is the concentration difference you can see and what is the time passed that also you know. So, you can easily find out the rate. So, this is the average rate okay? and the concentrations you know that if the concentration in moles per liter say for example, then uh, and um, the time you measure in second then it will be like um, the, the rate of reaction has the unit moles per liter per second, it is easy. Now, this is the average uh, speed or average rate it is easy to understand, but then what is the what is the uh, uh, instantaneous uh, instantaneous uh, rate that is very important for kinetics. Now, taking some example NO2 plus CO the same example average rate we can express in terms of NO that means NO the concentration uh, difference of NO um, and the time difference you can divide it by the time difference. So, NO the final concentration minus NO the initial concentration by the time final minus initial. So, that is the average rate. So, time uh, delta T may be large also no problem for the average average rate determination. Now, uh, instantaneous rate uh, comes into picture when this delta T is becoming very very small. Okay. So, and instantaneous rate is the is the rate of a reaction at a particular moment during the course of the reaction. So, this the determination of instantaneous rate is, uh, is uh, difficult. Now, graphically we can explain. Uh, by this figure say for example, here the same example here the concentration uh, of NO you are measuring that is the product product one of the products. So, the concentration will uh, will increase. So, the curve will be like this. So, if you want to determine the average speed between this 50, uh, 50 um, uh, and 150 this is the second you see the time is second. So, 50 second and 150 second in, bet in between these two time if you want to uh, see what is the average uh, 
average speed or average rate, then you have to take this point, this is this you have to, uh, this is uh, the difference is 100, 100 second right and the concentration difference is you have to draw the perpendicular on the y axis from here also y axis. So, this is the difference uh, of the concentration. So, this one and this one, this one by this one will be the slope of the uh, slope of the line that is uh, joined, uh, joined between these two times. So, the slope will give you the average uh, rate or average speed, but then uh, to determine the uh, instantaneous say for example, at this point at uh, 200 uh, second you want to know the instantaneous rate or instantaneous speed then what you will do you have to draw a tangent at this point and then you have to you may uh, extrapolate it say for example, up to 150 and then here up to say 250 then same way you have to draw the uh, perpendicular from this cutting points and then you know the concentration difference and you know the time difference this way you can find out the instantaneous uh, rate at this point. So, this is uh, this is very easy if we determine the instantaneous rate of a reaction at the moment uh, that it begins in the beginning if we do if you calculate the instantaneous um, rate then we will call it the initial rate of that reaction. Okay. So, in this is also sometimes uh, very important. Now, uh, taking the same uh, same example um, uh, how we can express I already told you, but here you see in this example this a this is a different reaction where you see the stoichiometry. In the previous one the stoichiometry of the reactants and products were 1 1 1 1, but here it is not like that here it is 2 is to 1 and then 2. Okay. So, if you if you think about oxygen then rate of disappearance of oxygen is the rate of the reaction if you tell like that then you can see uh, that it is uh, it is decreasing two times as that of the oxygen that is why you have to divide means you have to uh, you, if you uh, want to express in terms of NO it will be half uh, half of uh, delta NO by delta T. Same is true for NO2, half of delta NO2 by delta T, but in this case it will be positive sign and in this case it will be negative sign. Okay. Now, uh, to generalize this, uh, if the reaction is A, A plus B, B giving to C, C uh, plus D, D, then the rate you can express in this way. 1 by A delta A by delta T minus sign and then 1 by B delta B by delta T minus sign then uh, 1 by C delta C by delta T it is positive sign same as true for uh, D. So, um, this relation you have to um, understand and you have to keep in mind, but the important thing is that this relation are true considering that there are no, no uh, transient intermediates uh, or if there are some intermediates then their concentrations are independent at least for some time or most of the time period um, of for the reaction. So, that you have otherwise this uh, this um, uh, a relation will not hold good. Now, the for the up to this uh, this uh, uh, what I have discussed you can uh, you can uh, read or you can um, um, more to have more idea or better idea you can read uh, from these two books. Uh, one is the process chemistry for water and wastewater treatment by L. D. Benefield and Judkins and Wendt that is um, uh, full reference is here. Another is the chemistry science of change uh, by uh, this is uh, this is a like textbook type it is also very nice book uh, you can read from these two uh, books. Um, so, what we have understood from the lecture one that Mm, what is the chemical reaction, what is the average rate uh, and what is the instantaneous rate uh, 
uh, of the chemical reaction and we have got some idea about the rate. Thank you.